This is Twit. Ratatouille, the fan-generated musical on TikTok, mm-hmm. is really pretty amazing. So explain and, and this because so, I haven't I haven't seen it. I, so Ratatouille I never, was gonna the, the, the fans want Ratatouille the musical, but of course there is no Broadway right now. So fans are creating music, script, makeup, choreography, uh, everything for Ratatouille the musical on TikTok. That guy right there. Just just to get a sense of this. They said that they needed songwriters and user Cincinnati Strikes Again said that she would like to see a tango between Linguini and Colette. Um, and so this is what I came up with. What are you doing? I'm cutting vegetables. I'm cutting vegetables. No, you waste energy and time. Okay. Do you think cooking is a cute job like mommy in the kitchen? Well, mommy never had to face a dinner hush when the orders came flooding in and every dish is different and none is simple and all of the different cooking times but must arrive on the customer's table at exactly the same time. Hot and perfect. Every right. second counts and you cannot be mommy. Do you understand? Not particularly. You're such a stupid boy. Just listen to me. Okay. If you want to make it in the kitchen, wow. yes, ma'am. you can't just flail your yeah. arms around. Right. Super talented. So honey, time to focus. You lose me at musical, though. And listen, <laughs> oh, and you've got to admit, this kid is cute and that's talented. Talent. And no, that's just that's great work. having fun. That is great work. Yeah, so, it, so that's a lot that, of effort that went into that. It is. Sure. The top one is, I think, um, kind of a theme um and 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 you, and you go down there's there's a choreography one there's a makeup one and it just really strikes me uh we talked about this last week when we had the um uh vaccine song oh yeah right jolene vaccine jolene is vaccine uh the ability to collaborate here oh wow is yeah. phenomenal right and 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 for fans, I mean, this idea that, that the content is something one person makes and then they sell it is so outmoded when you see what's possible here. And these people are doing this out of love, and they're mm-hmm. enjoying each other. They're connecting. Oh, oh, the guy, the guy, the chef. Just do the chef, and then we'll leave this. But the guy in the chef's outfit, he's really good. He does all kinds of great, funny stuff online. If you go back to him, yeah, that guy. You know what I always say. Anyone can cook, anyone can cook. All you have to do is look inside yourself. Anyone can cook. You could even write a book. It could sit right next to mine there on that this shelf. Is amazing. I love it. Isn't it? So it's so creative. Yeah. Please know yeah. Tim Rice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stacy, you and Ant are getting the Cynics Award of the Day. No, I'm, the, other, the, kid, the kid was, but this guy, I'm like, that's a little more what I expect from user-generated content. Anyone yeah. can cook. Uh, well, Still, I thought anyone it was can write a musical. <laughs> but I mean, but okay. So then you take this collaborative effort of all of these random people from across the world pitching in on this one like magical idea. Magical. Put that in air quotes if, if you don't actually think it's magical. But <laughs> like creating a musical around Ratatouille and doing it around the format that you're given with TikTok, which are these short little clips that allow you to, it's like you're building a sandwich slowly over time. And at the end, you've got all the pieces. Like, do they then, I'd, I'd be curious to know if at the end of this, at the end of the day, they have all the songs in place. They have all the, the lyrics written, the music, you know, written to those and some sort of a story arc to combine it. Does it then end up in in an actual musical, like an actual play? Can could you extract that and then turn it into something that ends up on the stage? I think that you totally could. I mean, I think you, you could. could. And you I think Disney, it? Pixar, right, doing this. But right. then imagine That's the true. lawyer hell of rights. Yeah. Right. Anyone could cook. That's my song. Well, no, I did it too. No, I added oh, to boy. it. Oh boy, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, that's it. I love. I love that people can do it. I want them to do it. But when you think about creating something this way in, you know, I did theater in high school when, you know, every student directed play suddenly went over this where everybody was like, I have this idea. I have this idea. I have this idea. And then suddenly you have nothing on stage. Right. right? So, so there's a place for this. It's exciting. I want there to be room for it. And I, I am glad when creators, put their stuff out there for this sort of thing. But it's also like we do live in a society where you have to buy food. So how do you allow people to do something like this and still let them buy food? 
and so I wrote we a haven't post answered some time that. Ago. Sorry, oh. I wrote a post some time ago, and then and part of my one of my last books, arguing for a system of credit right versus copyright, that in a mm. chain of creativity, right, the person who inspired Jolene's vaccine has credit, the person who uh, wrote the lyrics gets credit, the person who actually recorded it gets credit, the person who promotes it gets credit, and you want a system where you can um, reward the behaviors you want in a chain of creativity, and what we're seeing in both these cases is a chain of creativity. And clearly there's something here. The hashtag Ratatouille the Musical has 14 million views. Huh. Um, Ratatouille the Musical has approximately 80, what is that? How's that 88.5 million? Uh, well, anyway. Oh, each, okay, so it has, it's, it's different. So, so together, it's 100 million views to the two hashtags. <clears throat> right, so there's clearly popularity here. There's clearly value here. In the old days, Disney would have come out and said, "Ratatouille is our copyright. You can't do anything." Mm -hmm. But yeah. now they see they clearly see some value here, um, and and it's we're going to invent new systems to figure this out. You're right, Stacy. We've got to support creativity, but creativity is not supported in one model, which is a, an owning the content view um, mm -hmm. that we had before. The issue I have with this is the attention span. This is something that was created for a 60 second clip or so, uh, you know, two minutes or less, pretty much. And it's great. I, I really do respect that. It's probably more than you are, want, right, Ed? That's probably well, about just what you well, can bear a musical. in a musical. <laughs> yeah, it is a musical. So, yeah. But no, seriously, what, they have these constraints of can creating something captivating within 60 seconds. And that's great. So you're going to get those 100 million views. And this probably isn't the question for you, Mr. Jarvis, but I'll just ask everybody in general. If that same creator was to put together a indie film with this type of model, say it was 30 minutes, would you watch it? For Ratatouille? I would because I like it. Yeah. But yeah. Because I think I that's where a lot of it you, sort man. of falls off. These these cats, uh, not cats, these people. <laughs> Sorry, I went slang. They're kind of jazzy. Uh, these people, <laughs> they're, they're, they're super talented. And I, I like to see how they could get a fair shake going into a bigger screen, bigger stage, if you will. But it just seems like society will totally forget about them because they're only wanting that little 60-second snippet of them. They don't well, want a half-hour uh, for a feature film from them, you know? At least that's what society, I see. Society might forget, but I think it is a great chance to show, like, the hiring people at Pixar. Like, Yeah. I mean, sure, I, yeah. I think there's room mm -hmm. for something like this to build a name for yourself or to create, you know, like this that kid. Real. Yeah, it's, it's basically like, hey, I did this. And it's really compelling. And yeah. I love it. That I mean, again, it, yeah. I, I love it. I just feel bad for these people because I've been in certain forums and, and community groups and seeing these conversations come up where I, I put this thing together for XYZ platform and it got a gazillion likes and a gazillion reshares and yada, yada, yada. And then I spent months working on this film and nobody watched it. You know, mm. and it was I mean, pretty much the, uh, the same thing. But they put it in a long form format with a little bit more meat and taters to it. Uh, but people just, yeah, whatever. So, sorry, um, I'm trying to find something here. So I, I, I've been reading. It depends, Ant, I think, on what your goal in life is, what your goal for the thing is. Right? It may be sufficient that you found a community of people who um, – uh, who like it and 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 share and collaborate? I, I, I'm right. just about to write about a book called um, "Distributed Blackness" by Andre Brock Jr., mm -hmm. which is about black Twitter. That. I mentioned before. Good. Uh, I'll give him more more plugs. And and one thing I learned from him is 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 that I I had a mass media view of it. Like when something passed over a critical mass, oh, that's what it's made it. Right. Yeah. And what he argues is no. Yes. Black Lives Matter had to pass over a critical mass to make an impact. True. But on the everyday, he's saying in black Twitter, people don't want to talk to the whole world. They want to talk to each other with their to own language, other. with their own views, right? And that is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And we have to honor that, that the mass media view that something has to be huge is the only definition of success. Totally. Is what right. we're escaping on the net. 
Yeah. And I realized like that's kind of the at least in, I can I can accept my part in that is that was what I brought to this conversation was, well, wait a minute, this is great. But what if we made it better? And really, mm-hmm. this could be this could be the pinnacle of what they were even wanting in the first place. The fact that that kid wrote that two yeah. minute clip and and like did that so incredibly well in yep. in his mind. That could be absolutely enough and probably is actually and like kudos. probably yeah. them hearing yeah. me say, what if we make this a big play is is probably the difference between me being older and not understanding what the younger generation really feels about, like creating for something like TikTok or even right. even Twit. Right. Leo has said that he yeah. doesn't want the podcast to get too big because then they lose their focus. They lose the community right. around them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's why I posed my question the way I did. I didn't necessarily want it to direct it to Mr. Jarvis because he's an older gentleman, and it's hey, hey. Quite frankly, <laughs> I mean, hey, it is what it is. Come on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> older folks have a different way of thinking about certain things, uh, especially when it comes to these little platforms. So, yeah, they keep evolving, and so I don't know, does, man. I think you're uh, you're so you're the, the, in this discussion. You're the most old farty of us. Oh, I, I know, I'm an old you're fart. The, uh, hey, kids, I've been an old fart that, for about 20 that years. that musical <laughs> off my yard. <laughs> I've been All an right, old Stacey, fart for Stacey, I got to hear, what did you, you play in high school? Queen Pruitt. She'll tell you the same thing. Yeah, he's an old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Grump. You're being grumpy. <laughs> Stacy, what did you play in high school? I'm dying to know. Oh, all kinds of things. I, I, I was a state UIL award-winning actress. Ta-da! Outstanding. Oh. Outstanding. <laughs> Wow. Uh, but I didn't do musicals because I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So <laughs> <laughs> for those, did you, did I was you the dance? stage manager. I can dance. dance. Oh, I was the Wicked Witch. That That's probably something that everyone well, can see one. and appreciate. Yeah. Had a prosthetic wow. nose, green paint on my face. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Can, you do, can you do the evil laugh? Come on. Can you do I it can. now still? Okay, ready. Hold on. Let's see. Well, I, all right. I think I can't. Hold on. <laughs> you my pretty and your little dog too <laughs> oh my I love gosh it. perfect that's Damn. awesome <laughs> okay <laughs> now i'm gonna be red for the rest of the show i can't believe you convinced me to do that okay <laughs>